Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, September 19th, and it is a rather chilly morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's going to warm up, we're going to get close to 80 today, but uh, boy, the mornings are getting cooler. So, uh, fall is upon us. Uh, got my Nirup this morning, and I'm enjoying some old Joe Krantz. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a couple minutes. Just lit it right before I pressed record here, so we have to relight in a moment. And got some 8 o'clock coffee. So, before we get into the old Joe Krantz, uh, we had, if, if you didn't tune in uh, this past Friday for the live stream, we, we had a good time. I had a good time. I, I hope folks enjoyed it. Uh, we did a 100th live stream celebration, had uh, trivia. Pretty much the whole time, wound up going a half an hour longer than usual, and uh, just just had a good time. I want to congratulate all the prize winners. I want to, in particular, thank Larry Blackett, who uh, was kind enough to donate a tamper for the for, for as one of the prizes. Uh, heard from Larry this morning, and he was in touch yesterday with Ron Hardcrackers, who won the tamper, and uh, they worked out which tamper Ron's going to get, and that's going to be on his way on Monday, so congratulations, Ron. Uh, Yardism. Chad won the 7 le 626 Series 3, and that pipe is in the mail as of yesterday on its way out to Chad. And uh, our buddy Everett Young won the $50 gift certificate, which he then kindly decided to give to our friend uh, Corvette Jim. So I sent the gift certificate yesterday to Corvette Jim. Unfortunately, Smoking Pipes doesn't have an electronic delivery method, so I actually had to have him physically send the card. Not a big deal, but Jim will have it in a, in a few days. So congratulations to all the winners, and I want to thank everybody that participated uh, but beyond that I want to thank everybody that's just been a part of what we're doing here you know th this has been it's unbelievable to me that I was able to do a hundred live streams because I never thought I was going to do one uh, and I just enjoy the heck out of it so thank you all for being a part of that and uh, for tuning in every week and if you're not into live streams for tuning in every Sunday and, and just following along with the restoration videos and whatever else you do, I just, I'm so blessed to have you guys as friends to be able to come down here and sit in my basement and talk to myself, but know that I'm not talking to myself. And uh, it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. So thank you all for that. So what I'm smoking today is uh, what somebody on the live stream on Friday referred to as old, old Joe Krantz. Uh, I wanted to open something special for the, for the celebration on Friday, and I decided to crack open a jar of some old Joe Krantz that I put away back in 2016. So this is uh, actually from September of 2016, so this is pretty much exactly five years old. And... I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Um, I think it was Scott at the 16th day that, that said that he has a large amount of old old Joe Krantz that he's been smoking and really enjoys it, but he didn't know how it compared to the newer stuff because he hasn't had any in a while. And I was talking to um, my friend uh, Johnny Ford about the aging of old Joe Krantz, and we were wondering how it would, would age. And my thought on it has been, you know, for a while now, that it will actually become deeper and sweeter because of the Red Virginia. And in case you're not familiar with old Joe Krantz, or you don't know the story behind it, so you're probably familiar with Haunted Bookshop, for better or worse. <laughs> Not everybody loves it. And Haunted Bookshop is a blend of Virginia, Burley, and Perique. And it has uh, some very nice uh, Red Virginia in it, which is, you know, I'm not a big Virginia fan, but the Red Virginia and Haunted Bookshop really adds something special to it, and I, I, I like it a lot. 
So Haunted Bookshop was blended by a gentleman uh, who's no longer with us by the name of Bob Murnowski. And there is a quote on the uh, tobaccoreviews.com uh, page for Old Joe Kranz uh, that is a note from Bob Ronowski about Old Joe Kranz. And I thought I'd just read this to give you some background and an idea of what the blend actually is. So uh, Bob Ronowski says, the blend was named in honor of my grandfather, who was also my pipe smoking mentor and a role model. He primarily smoked Burleys like Union Jack and Edward Sliced. I cannot think of a time when I didn't see him without one of his beat up pipes and the aroma of pipe smoke around him. In any case, I was reading the reviews of Haunted Bookshop and Norm Musicant, who's a smoker of Haunted Bookshop, indicated that he, he would like more Red Virginia in his blends, or he liked more Red Virginias in his blends. Norm is someone whose opinion I respect. I was looking for a simple, hearty, burly blend that could hold my interest all day. So, a new blend. So, Old Joe Kranz is haunted bookshop with additional Red Virginia. And because of that, and because, you know, I've always found, you know, I know people, there's a lot of back and forth about this. People say that uh, Old Joe Kranz is actually stronger than haunted bookshop. And I never know what people mean by stronger. Uh, in terms of flavor profile, it's sweeter. You know, I can definitely detect the additional Virginia in Old Joe Kranz. In terms of nicotine content, I can't tell you because I'm just not sensitive to nicotine. Um, but it definitely is sweeter, at least to my, my palate. So when I put this away, I was expecting it to be mostly, the effect of aging to mostly be upon those Red Virginias because we all know that barley has a fairly low sugar content. It really doesn't change very much with age and of course the perique if anything should mellow uh i would think um, i don't know what i'm talking about but i, I would guess the perique would mellow so i was expecting the primary effect to be a deepening of that um, red virginia sweetness which tends to be more of a uh, caramelly sort of dark sweet rather than the high sweets of the, the yellow uh, Virginias. Well, after sitting in a jar for five years, I finally opened it and I got to tell you, I'm a little surprised. So what has happened is it's, it's a smoother blend. It's definitely a more, um, I hate to say mellow because that makes it sound like it's toned down. It's it's more uniform. It's more uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Melded. It's it's a better melded blend. And of course, you know, Cornell and Deal makes their tobaccos pretty much on demand. So very often when you're buying, this was a bulk uh, uh, blend purchase. When you're buying it in bulk, you're getting stuff that's been made fairly recently, and it always benefits from just a few weeks even of, of sitting in a jar. Uh, so it's not surprising that it's kind of melded together a bit over those five years. The sweetness is there, and it's definitely deepened a, a bit, but it's not like super sweet. It's actually not that different from old Joe Krantz, other than that sort of melding of things. You know, the rough edges are gone. What's really surprising about this is the perique. The Perique is, I mean, the retrohale on this is rough for me, and I I like the retrohale Perique. This has got that, that wasabi heat to it that is very intense, um, much more so than fresh Old Joe Krantz, and certainly more than Haunted Bookshop. It's wonderful. You know, I, I like Perique. I, I, I like everything about this, so this is really good. So. If you got some old Joe Krantz and you got a jar, put it away for five years and see what happens. If you got five years to wait to. When I was uh, going through my various jars looking for this, because I've got a horrible organization of my tobacco where I put everything in 
until recently I've always used these jars because I figured these are about the size of a tin and you know that's about what I'm going to want to smoke. As I've started cellaring more deeply uh, blends like Haunted Bookshop and Pegasus I'm using larger jars because I know I'm going to open one of those up and I'm going to keep it for you know since I'm smoking those at a pound a time I, I, I don't really need a small jar like that. These jars come in a box of four. So what I've been doing for many years now is I fill the jars, put a label on them, put them back into the box, and then that goes up on a shelf. Well, that makes it impossible to find anything. You gotta open every box and take out two of the jars so you can see the jars on the bottom. It's not a good system. So someday, and I got many things to do before I do this, but someday I'm going to put together some kind of a cabinet to, to keep all the tobacco in and I'll do a better job of cataloging and arranging and everything. I do have a database that lists all the tobaccos, but it doesn't tell me where they are. So that's not very useful. So maybe I'll come up with at least like a shelf system, you know, shelf one, two, three. So at least I can narrow it down to one shelf. Because I probably had to open about six or seven boxes before I found this. The reason I bring that up is it was interesting because I saw some tobaccos that I had forgotten that I had uh, had cellared. And like I've got a fair amount of Samoy. I came across a jar of Shandigaff. Uh, a lot of John Patton stuff, and I, I do like John Patton's blends. Uh, one I had put away, I wasn't too thrilled with, uh, called Quadruple Virginia. And uh, you know, that's that's at least five years old. So maybe it's time to see if that's changed. Of course, the problem with all of these is I didn't really take notes or anything. I just remember that I did not like Quadruple Virginia. I bought like two ounces to try it said I don't like this put it in a jar that's all I can remember so I don't know why I didn't like it and I won't be able to tell you if it changed but I could at least tell you if I like it now but that kind of cellaring is really a, a young Felder's game because you know you got to be realistic how many five-year periods do you have uh, once you get you know, into your 50s and 60s and so on. It's, yeah, it's not the same. It's not the same as when you're 30, for sure. Of course, I hope we all have many, many more five-year periods. <coughs> Excuse me. That break. But yeah, I've I've stopped thinking about cellaring in terms of aging, and now I'm just thinking of it in terms of avoiding the ever-increasing taxes and be, being able to afford to continue enjoying a pipe in my retirement years. Ah, but I'm glad I I put this away when I did because this is uh this is a very nice treat. Well friends, um before I sign off I just want to let you know that I'm not gonna be doing a live stream this coming Friday. Um it is my wife and I's twenty-third wedding anniversary. It's funny, we've both been thinking it's our 25th wedding anniversary for like, it seems like 10 years now. <laughs> and we're getting closer, we're getting closer. But, you know, 23 is still pretty good and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do something fun this weekend, this coming weekend. And uh, I just wanted to be able to spend Friday night with her. So that's what I'll be doing. Uh, I'm sure there'll be other things to keep your interest on Friday night and uh, I'll be back the following week. I did get, uh, just yesterday actually, I got the shipment of acrylic in that I've been waiting for. So I will 
work really hard to get Justin's pipes finished and hopefully between now and the next live stream I'll be able to give you an update on the auction. Uh, I've got the two modified corn cob pipes that I was making for Justin as well as uh, some really nice gifts from James Stumbo. Uh, a couple of pipe stands, a really beautiful tobacco tray and a very nice knife uh, that James made. So those things will all be available for, for auction and it all benefits Justin Aldrich's family. Um, Justin died tragically um, earlier this month, I think. Sorry, time is... No, it was last month. It was last month. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, young guy, large family. Uh, seven, I think four kids. I think, uh, and and he was a dear friend. So I, I want to do something to to help his family. And you guys have already exhibited a lot of support for that. So we will be doing that. It will probably not be at the live stream in in two weeks' time. I'm I'm probably going to try to do a separate live event for the auction, and we'll we'll work that out. Details to come, but that is coming in the uh, not too distant future. All right, friends. Well, that's it. I don't want to take up any more of your Sunday. I hope you're having a good Sunday. I hope you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Take care now, my friends.